We've had lots of questions tonight for Dr. Alex Jahangir, the chairman of the Metro Coronavirus Task Force, and I have one for you now. Um, I watch these numbers every day. Right now in Davidson County, there are nearly 18,000 cases so far, and the highest percentage, the highest number of cases falls in that 21 to 30 year old age bracket with 5,445 cases to date. It's really astonishing because when we started this, a couple of months ago now, we said it, really the elderly, this is so, you know, they can, they're going to be our most critical age range. It's been the young kids who are getting this. And, and when you look at what's happening on Broadway, you kind of understand why, right? Yes, in short, um, you know, the, the, there's good and bad news in this. So the bad news is exactly that is, is it is spreading very rampantly amongst the, um, the 20 to 30 year old range roughly. And, and those individuals do things that most 20, 30 year olds do. They go yeah. out, they, they socialize and get infected. And if it was just that, honestly, it's not a big deal because the, the good thing is most of those people don't get really sick. Their mortality rate is almost 0%. Now, if you look at the age range in Davidson County, that's the 65 and older, and this blows my mind every time I look at it. There's about a thousand or so people who are 65 and older mm -hmm. who've gotten this virus. 10% of them died wow. and just died not gotten really sick, have died in Davidson County. So those people get it from there. As you remember earlier in the segment, yeah. and I was talking about most people get it through household contact. So this 30 year old goes home and hugs their 65 year old mom or older grandmother and they get it, they die. And so that is why I think the onus on, on our younger um, neighbors to be careful about this really matters. And so Please be careful. I mean, that's really all I can say, but it really, I mean, 10% mortality rate blows my mind. And the age range right below that, 50 to, um, 55 to 65, it's only uh, like a 1.5% mortality rate. So really when you hit that 65 age, it's, it's really bad. I, I'm sure you've mentioned this in the daily press briefings, but I think you should mention it again tomorrow. I mean, that really is mind boggling. 10%, that's scary. Yeah. That yeah, is scary. Me too. It scared me too when I saw that. Wow. Yeah. Okay, let's get back to the phone lines here. I uh, lost a couple of people. Let's see, Christina's still on the line. Christina, go ahead with your question. Because my question is a concern question because in Texas, 82 babies have passed away because of COVID-19. I'm the age of one years old. I'm a pregnant mother. Mm -hmm. And my concern is like this, when I go to the hospital, how do I know for a fact that I don't get infected by the COVID-19 or my baby won't be able to get infected by the COVID-19? Mm, that is a lot to worry about as a pregnant mama. Okay, what do you have to say to Christina, Dr. Jahangir? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's so many things to worry about when you're pregnant. Yeah. I mean, and it's kind of wild. This is one of these things you worry about right now. Um, here's what I would tell you. I feel the safest when I'm in the hospital um, because mm. of the all the, stip, all the rules around how to get into a hospital, the testing that happens. Every single patient I operate on gets a COVID test. Every day I walk into the hospital, I get scanned. If I've been in the vicinity of a COVID patient, which I, I, I do every day, Vanderbilt sends me a, a message saying, how are you feeling today? And every other institution is doing something similar. So in the hospital setting, I actually feel more safe than I do outside of the hospital setting. So yes, there's a risk I, I, and nothing's ever zero, but the health systems in our in our city have done a really good job at, at, at and making sure you're safe as a patient. Um, but it is scary, sure. And when you have your baby, please remember your baby's immune system is really compromised on the front end. So if you can breastfeed, get that immunity up and then keep them away from other people for a while. So thanks. Can we talk about uh, the positivity rate? One thing I see people talk a lot about on social media, they'll say, well, of course we're having more positive tests. More people are getting tested. And you do see giant numbers of people getting tested. Can you explain what the positivity rate is and, and some background on that? Yeah, so um, what the positivity rate is, is if, this, if you have 10,000 people who get tested and you have 1,000 a, a of those people, or let's say 100 people get tested and 10 of those people are infected, your positive rate is 10%, mm -hmm. okay? And that's, that's, that tells you have a good surveillance in the community. Now, if you're increasing your test to 1,000 people, you would hope that positive rate would drop down because you're now diluting the field. But if that, in our city, where we're testing 15,000 a week now, or 20,000 a week uh, last week, you would hope that positive rate would, would head downward or at least stay at that 10%, for God's sakes. Now we're up at like 15, 16%, which means there's even more people infected and these tests are finding them. 
And, and all that while our hospitalization rates stay, are going up and our mortality rate um, is the percentage is staying the same, but the numbers are going up, which means that there's just more infection in the city. So that's what that means. Ideally, if you test more, that positivity percentage will go down. It's not happening in our city. In fact, it's going up. Oh, I've been watching our Facebook feed as well, and this is another one that I've heard a lot on um, social media. It's one that my husband and I even talked about last week. It's this story, and Fred brings it up, um, where people say, my friend went to get tested. She sat in line. She filled out the paperwork. She sat in line for hours and then decided to leave, and three days later, she got her positive test results in the mail. Have you heard this one, Dr. Jahunger? You know, I, I heard something like that. I, I was I was waiting for another um, interview, and I heard it in my in my headset. I'd never heard that prior to that, but yeah, I've heard, it's pretty yeah, wild. It's I, been I just circulating all that. around. I saw a reporter in LA tweet the very same thing. I've yeah. been asked about it. We've had calls to the newsroom about it. Fred on social media is asking about it right now. Um, so I just want to put it out there that the story is kind of yeah, circulating no all idea. across it's the been country. A while. It is, it is pretty yeah. wild. Um, what else are you hearing that, that comes up on social media? Or you hear people talk about around you and you go, no, 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 that's not the case. Let me, let me set you straight on that. Anything pop to mind? <laughs> um, gosh, there's probably so much. But um, <laughs> in, in short, I, I think the, the big thing is um, th we're not double counting cases. I think a lot of people mm -hmm. think we're double counting cases. Um, I think a lot of people think um, that, you know, everyone that, that enters the hospital with COVID, but let's say you get in a car wreck and you have COVID and you die. Right. They're not saying you die because of COVID, you die because you're a car wreck. Um, those are important things because I understand people's um, suspicions of people gaming the system or changing the numbers. I can tell you from a pure science fact, I mean, we're, I'm driven by the science and, and so, Anyway, those are some of the some of the things that I've heard. Is is there's no double dipping and there's no just raising the death rates just to raise them. So. Why did we start tracking probable cases? I think that threw a lot of people for a loop and even probable deaths. Yeah, it, it threw me for a loop too. And in fact, if you listen to my morning press conferences, I still talk about confirmed cases because I want to be consistent with the numbers we've given. Um, the CDC, Center for Disease Control, um, started asking each state to do that and. Tennessee compli complied with that, and thus um, we complied with Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, in our numbers, we do have both probable and confirmed, um, both deaths and cases. But really, if you look, the number is like 15 or 20. There aren't that many. And those are people who might have died at home or might have had other symptoms, that, but they didn't get tested. I'll tell you, in the numbers that I verbalized, they're all confirmed. Say that last part again. Our, our um, feed kind of got funky a little bit there, and I want people to hear oh, it. I'm sorry. That's okay. I said they're all they're all confirmed, the ones that I verbalized. Okay, gotcha. So, I mean, I, I think it is so important that we just keep those very clear. Uh, the metrics that, that we are watching that dashboard every day with the red, yellow, and green, um, it, just overall, how are we doing in, in Davidson County? Because that's what you're in charge of right now. Well, there's a lot more colors in green on that chart, mm. which really is disappointing. Um, I'll tell you the things that I, are, we're testing a lot. I'm proud of that. Our, our public health capacity, our contact tracers are working their tails off. We're hiring more. We're looking at using technology because if you have more cases, you need more ability to contact. Our hospital capacity is, is, is reasonable. I mean, we've had it better, but that's just a function of daily ebb and flow of hospitals. So I'm not extremely worried about that right now but our numbers are going up and our transmission rates going up so transmission rate is how many people one person infects if you get that number at one or below sooner or later that overall number of active cases will go down but right now we're at 1.1 1.15 williamson county i saw right before this is at 1.36 which means every one person infects like almost one and a half other people not good that's not gonna help us bring the numbers down. And Williamson County people come into Nashville. Mm -hmm. My parents live in Williamson County. I drive back and forth. So we have to be really careful and be really diligent about this. And I know that some people have joined us late and they're saying, what about schools? We have one minute left and I think that's the top topic on everybody's mind. Again, what is yeah. your advice for parents? My advice is, is, first of all, know what your school's planning. Make sure that what they're planning makes sense from a science standpoint. Most of the schools in our regions are. I think wearing masks is important. You're not going to have the same school setting you had last year. Your desk is going to be facing different. You're going to eat cafeteria different. There's not going to be assemblies. And you're not going to probably have sports. And I know that's not fun to hear, but that's probably realistic. 
but look at your own situation at home look at your child look at who your child interacts with when they come home um, and then make the best decision for you and your family and and go to a school that'll support that decision yeah it's not the same for everyone dr jahangir as always thank you for your time you're giving a lot to the city right now and also to us by being our guests we appreciate it thank you for the opportunity all right have a good night and we will wrap it up right after this stay with us